Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noting. In this episode, we're gonna try to procedurally um, create uh, one of these uh, spiky dog bracelet. Um, it's a neck bracelet that you might have seen in uh, some of the cartoon animals. It makes the, the bulldog looks like a, like a badass. But anyway, I'll make the simplest one, probably like this one, this bracelet, and then you might already see that if you want to procedurally create this, there are a couple of ways. Um, the detail is actually can be a little bit tricky, but I don't worry for that. I probably gonna use like a, I'll start with a cylinder or a ring, and this part can be like a cone. Um, so yeah, let's just get started. Jump into Blender, delete everything, go to compositing. I'm I'm gonna be using Spreadshop add-on. Spreadshop add-on has a lot of um, like a generated. Uh, primitive that you can work with let's say you can you can start with a with a ring or like a cylinder ring and cylinder they are very similar but uh, it's, it's totally up to you where you wanna uh, what you're gonna choose for this so let's say a cylinder and you wanna make the dog uh, color thing so in this case I just gonna reduce the height and then I gonna get rid of the caps so now we have something that's uh, just like a extruded circle or maybe a little bit like ring without any kind of extrusion. We can always extrude it uh, later, you know, spiky dog bracelet. Save it. Okay, now with this guy, we can reduce the number of vertices. So we have less, uh, for, this is gonna be like, if you think about it, the each of the polygon face, we can place the, the cone. Um, so yeah, that should be pretty simple, right? Uh, yes, it is actually pretty simple because uh, you can use uh, polygon adaptive for that, or adaptive polygons. So adaptive polygon basically can replace every polygon face with another object. And if we are using like a cylinder, another cylinder, because we don't have a cone, but we can use cylinder to create a cone. Uh, I'm going to show you real quick. So, so this is a normal cylinder. I'll make it smaller and reduce the height. And the top bit, I'm going to make it zero. And we have a cone. Uh, sometimes you don't want it to be totally zero, maybe just a little bit. I'm holding shift, and then I, so I have this little bit of little thing there. Make it like a, for example. So this got to be our spiky part. Okay, and we're just going to place it using adaptive polygons. Should be really easy, I think. Just the cylinder as the recipient so the original cylinder and the donor will be our cone hopefully this work oh delete that all right so it's getting somewhere apparently the cone is also automatically scale. Um, see this guy with adaptive, this guy actually adapt, adapt to the surface. So keep that in mind. If you want like a rounded cone, make sure this is like correct. And you can have, you have this control actually to control the scaling and also the Z coefficient here. So um, I'll show you. It's kind of really handy feature there. You can kind of scale it in the Z axis. Cool, so we are, we're almost getting there actually. It's pretty, pretty simple. Make this like a dark color and then the cone can be like white is also, or like silver color. I might actually render this using Blender if at some point. Um, Yeah, what else can we do here? Okay, with the spike thing, um, if I'm not wrong, this is like um, 
this is vectorized so you can actually make like a random give a random number and just plug this into the z coefficient and you can actually have a control over the height it's kind of really cool really cool feature that sometimes the artist can take this for granted see you can easily create a randomness with the spike kind of like a sun there okay we don't want that so go back to what we have before so we have the spiky part what else do we need um, sometimes adding the details can be slightly tricky but you know you always look at the you look at the primitive and then look at the ages and then what not which part you can extract from from your from the elements of the your objects and maybe you can kind of add details from that in this case maybe let's say for the spike key parts maybe we want to add some details to the top part for example just like a ring so we can do that <clears throat> and there are a couple of ways but I think I will use the just UV connections just extract the cylinder um, I'll show you what I mean I'm gonna hide this part okay we're gonna extract just the edges of the cylinder So maybe, uh, yeah, if we turn on separate and slice, we actually can get the top part there, but we don't, we don't want that. So we, we're probably going to have to have uh, another one of the cylinder, this one. It's going to be separated so what's going to happen is we can have this ring and the ring with the ring we can just use a polyline viewer which is going to extract a, a curve it's going to generate a curve from this and then we can close it so we have that bits there so that, i think that's the easiest easiest way to do it there are many ways to do this and you, you wanna um, this is like segmented you can use B spline on so it's more it's no longer segmented if that's what you want but I, I don't mind with the segmented one so that's kind of like a low poly dogs neck bracelet and the curve itself is already um, a real object and we can merge it single single objects and the rest of the stuff we can bake it just go to this panel and then bake it all and you should have our dog bracelet so it's kind of simple and if you actually want to add some kind of more details like the thickness you can you can do that as well you know just add extrusion to this uh to this bit maybe i'll do that so extrusion Polygon extrude multi extrude um, extrude region extrude region I guess by the normal so this guy goes in there this one goes in there duplicate like this. So we're gonna increase the height and scale it. Uh, interesting. The height doesn't have any effects, but the scaling kind of does. Yeah, I guess that's all right. So that's kind of hiding that bits a little bit there. You know, just hide it. Uh, actually, sometimes with the 3D modeling, you can cheat a little bit, you know, you can actually, you can cheat a lot. So now we can bake all, should have our objects. There you go, our 
dog bracelet. Simple and easy, and yeah, this is just a quick little trick there. Of course, it is uh, like super simple, but I think you can always make a little bit of modifications to make this a little bit more uh, detail or something, you know, but this is like the basics. And you can always, let's say this part you wanna, if you wanna trim it, you can create like a boolean and make a hole for it, for the color. You can do that as well, um, I guess. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this uh, live learning. Uh, let me know what you think. If you have any kind of like an uh, idea what you want to add here, just let me know. Um, or maybe we can continue working on this next time. I kind of like the Blender EV. I, I don't have it here, but I have on the other Blender and it's still in beta, but I, I really like Blender EV. It's, it can make everything look realistic right away uh, in the 3D view. So I might try to do that, but here you go. This is a quick dog, procedural dog color, spiky dog color using Spreadshock add-on. Hope you enjoy it. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.